Hello and welcome to another episode of Mandy's Musings. This week, we'll be drawing from psychology to dissect the mind of literature's most sinister lover, Humbert Humbert, of Vladimir Nabokov's tragic comedy, Lolita. Let us begin. advanced alongside an immutable human condition, the dissection of the mind has produced various conclusions, synthesized in the Freudian model of id, ego, and superego. At its simplest, Freudian philosophy offered a universal explanation for the actions of man and woman, filling the chasms between ethics and action, and youth and adulthood. The exploration of Humbert Humbert's Tears of Awareness in Nabokov's Lolita validates the principles of Freudian psychoanalysis extending the scope of human interrelation beyond cultural frontiers through primitive emotion and infallible instinct. The foundation atop which these understandings can be established, however, consists of details revealed through Humbert Humbert's most vocal beliefs and fundamental behavior, appealing to what is known as the conscious mind. The center of the story, femme fatale Lolita, and particularly Humbert's desire for her, is therefore included in the superficial level of awareness. The astonishing breadth of Lolita's influence is revealed immediately upon her appearance in the novel. As her lover admits, the 25 years I had lived since then tapered to a palpitating point and then vanished, immediately deifying the young starlet and accepting a position of subordination. Having lived desperately for the entirety of his adult life, burdened by an internal dualism between morality and impulse, Humbert valued Lolita's ability to synthesize his various desires above all else. He therefore felt as though her judgment represented his own interests for a renewed happiness, and bestowed on her his vitality, rejecting any past in which she was not present. Henceforth, Lolita symbolized Humbert's Achilles heel, though his pride in admitting to such vulnerability undermined cynicism and allowed for an observation of the sovereignty of human intent. Nevertheless, Humbert's fascination with Lolita did not inhibit him from understanding the danger of the power he gave her which was manifested in his observing, there, snugly wrapped in a white woolen scarf, lay a pocket automatic, caliber .32, capacity of magazine 8 cartridges, length a little under one-ninth of Lolita's neck, stock-checked walnut, and finished fully blued. By relating the physicalities and capabilities of a gun to his lovers, the author suggested that she herself was a lethal weapon capable of ruining him. The seamless integration of such claim into an otherwise mundane description further emphasizes the inevitable nature of chaos as a fruition of his relationship with Lolita. Humbert thus establishes his ethos, revealing the scope of his rationality and emotional intelligence as he victimizes himself, again. Analyzed in conjunction with the inconsistencies of his behavior throughout the novel, the detriment of Lolita's dynamism to Humbert, as well as his perception thereof, become evident precipitators of insanity. Yet, subconscious motives accidentally divulged only further complicate Humbert's emotional disorientation. Dishonoring a previous pledge to overlook past occurrences, his indulgence in the memory of a late childhood love can be identified as an important challenge in the affirmation my real liberation had come much earlier, at the moment in point of fact when Annabel Hayes, alias Dolores Lee, alias Lolita, had appeared to me in a kind of fictitious, dishonest, but eminently satisfactory arrangement. Humbert's inability to distinguish Annabel and Lolita, or interpret each for her worth, testifies to an idea of an infinite, incontestable historical cycle, relative to which the notion of personal jurisdiction is rendered insignificant. The subsequent use of Lolita's simplified name expands its meaning far beyond the nymphet to represent simplicity and ease of understanding, which are versatile and impersonal traits indicative of the passionless atmosphere between the two lovers, in contrast to what had previously been established. This apathy confirms that Humbert's obsession with Lolita was the realization of suppressed wistfulness and confirms Freudian ideas of trauma and its reach, thereby discrediting Humbert's ethical appeal. His understanding of Lolita's captivity thereupon emerges, most frequently through confessional phrases that characterize Lolita as an orphan, a lone child, an absolute waif, 
with whom a heavy, foul-smelling adult had had strenuous intercourse three times that very morning. Laden with guilt, Humbert's vision of Lolita shifts from demonic nymphet to fragile child upon consummating his desire, which reveals a compassionate aspect of his personality, albeit only apparent when guilty of an awful crime. As he adopts the passive voice, Humbert accepts responsibility for his actions, having become acutely aware of the differences between Lolita and Annabelle in terms of intimacy, and likely understood Annabelle's position of true victimhood. Considering the retrospective narration of the story, the unforeseen admission shows compassion's relevance as a coping mechanism for Humbert and the endurance of life's established rhythm. Contesting the gravity of objective experience, the interrelation between Humbert's conscience and his external performance is exposed. At length, this notion is further consolidated by conjectures about unconscious themes afflicting Humbert that are discernible only through rigorous analysis of repeated behavior. Contributing to the blossoming guilt within Humbert is likely a sense of admiration for the simplicity of the American dream, lightly implied in his remark pertaining to an unlikely coincidence that a traffic policeman deep in the nightmare of crisscross streets at half past 4 p.m. in a factory town was the hand of chance that interrupted the spell. Though easily dismissed as insignificant by unkeen readers, Humbert's use of the term chance in reference to the higher power, a deviation from his normal vocabulary in which McFate, commemorating Ramsdale acquaintance as a frequent entry, is indicative of a waning sense of happiness. Though many factors in his life are transformed by the death of Charlotte, Humbert's constant reliance on the word as a means of emotional support and his reluctance to make use of it in a negative context, reveal a desire to preserve his memory of Ramsdale. However, the most astounding thought residing in Humbert's unconscious mind, the product of an irrational fear of loss and desolation, according to Freud, must certainly be his true emotions towards Lolita, manifested in the claim it was love at first sight, at last sight, at ever and ever sight, as the author prepares to surrender all claims to his beloved. It is curious that the first reference to love in the novel should come at its end, a likely indicator of Humbert's pessimistic outlook on vulnerability and immortality. Though he is blinded by lust for the duration of his romance with Lolita, Humbert comes to understand love's role as a lens through which the world might be examined more insightfully. As the story completes its circumnavigation, leaving Humbert alone as in the beginning, the void that hollowed his soul for the 25 years spent without her is filled with an understanding of sacrifice. Experience allows for the synthesis of ethics and actions, morality and impulse, for both are determined by the human spirit, a synthesis in itself inherently the means to a proper end. Unexpressed emotions will never die. A brilliant consideration of Freud traversing generations in cultural conventions to deliver that astounding truth. While inapparent to the engaged reader, it becomes evident in hindsight that Humbert's love for Lolita was always the gravitational force in the world they built together. Shifting loyalties throughout the course of the work from blind confidence in fate to unwavering reliance upon himself and later an obligation to his love, Humbert changed alongside personal and social circumstances, revealing himself in his entirety as he fell irrevocably in love with Dolores Hayes. Through the manipulation of a widely unpleasant character, Nabokov was thus able to convey intrinsic truths regarding the bearing of mankind. Regardless of superficial barriers, the same conditions dictate our existence, irreversible, unpredictable, and quintessentially artistic. Only upon the consideration thereof is the dissection of insanity truly possible. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to support my channel and help me produce more content like this, please subscribe, like, and ring the notification bell. I'll be reading all the comments, so let me know your thoughts on Lita and suggestions for upcoming videos. And remember, today a reader, tomorrow a leader. Until next time.